was half blind and stained Bloody at the knees I had a built-in fever and bright red cheeks Just position and valleys and peaks It was all in fun, didn't hurt no one Till I went back for more Then there was damage done, but I made it home Woke up on the floor On the second night of my drinking I was looking for my car And as luck would have it I found it parked outside my favorite On the third night of my drinking, I was staring at your house. I had my dick in my hand, was convinced some man was in there hiding out. I had a foot on your door, you had me down on the floor. I woke the next morning and my jaw was sore. Then I was back at the bar and I was wanting some more. Turn 
logical one. He woke up real early, but he's late for his appointment. I sure wish I smoked me a joint. It's Thanksgiving and Jesus, I'm thankful for abundance and bounty and a big toss to drink for the love of your mama and the love of mine too. Just can't 
taste for killing anymore.
I stopped. But then I could never find anything that I liked with it for about a year, year and a half. And then uh, shortly before I ended up getting divorced, I wrote the first half of the lyrics of the song on a trampoline outside of Athens, Georgia. <laughs> While I was waiting for my then wife to get a haircut. <laughs> couldn't finish it. And in the meantime, all the things that the song talked about happened and came true. And I found myself about a year and a half later in a garage in Denton, Texas. And I finished the motherfucker. <laughs> I played it that night at the show with Rent Best from Slobberbone and a guy named Scott Dan Bond. Scott played along with me that night, and I played this song, and he'd never heard it before, but he played the most beautiful thing in the world. So every time I play it, I pretend I can still hear it next to me playing it. The song's called Heathens. <laughs> Something about the wrinkle in your forehead tells me there's a fit about to get down. If we get the van out of the ditch before morning, Nobody gotta know about what I know. And I never hear a single word you say when you tell me not to have my fun. It's the same old shit that I ain't gonna take off anyone.
trust in you with more than me. Something happened last night that made me feel so different. And I need you to drive out here and relieve me of it too.
for a long time was Ever South. I read Ever South. We were, we were getting close to finish the record, and uh, and um, I felt like we needed one more song, and I wrote that one, and I was so thankful. You know, I was like, all right, I got what I was looking for. And then we got busy, and I didn't even think about writing anything for a while. And ended up going 12 months. It was, it's the longest I've gone since 1973 without writing a song. And uh, so I started writing when I was eight. And, uh, and I always wrote a lot. <clears throat> and, um, and, so, uh, and, and so around last December, I started thinking, well, maybe I should uh, start writing some songs again. And, uh, and then everything I wrote, I hated. And uh, it sucked. And, uh, and then you start kind of freaking out. like, uh oh. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> Got a pretty big catalog. <laughs> I sure would like some new ones. But, um, but I have been writing again, and uh, um, this is a, like that last song is kind of one of the family songs. Um, uh, this new one I'm going to play for you right now is another family song. I, I wrote it for my mom, and, uh, uh, or about my mom, I guess I should say. It's not really for my mom. In fact, she probably didn't even. But um, <laughs> it's a funny story, you know. Uh, uh, my mom, she's uh, she's not she's not she, her health isn't really great right now. She's not doing all that good, and uh, and um, she's kind of up and down. She has, she has uh, you know, she she tends to have these like bouts with with uh, deathbed, and then she comes back, and uh, I still think she can outlive us all. But um, but uh, she um, but she. Uh, talks to my sister on the phone and she says, you know, when you talk to your brother, you can tell him he does have a mother. <laughs> so, didn't you talk to him like last week? Yeah, but you know, like I was reading an interview the other day in some magazine and there was all this talk about his dad. Nothing about his mother. <laughs> he never writes a song about me. <laughs> And Will was like, uh, 18 wheels of love. <laughs> the the band is called the Drive by Truckers, and we were made into a truck driver at the time. You know, it was kind of all related in a weird sort of way. Well, I don't know. All I know is he does have a mother. <laughs> That's a true story. So, uh, so all this stuff. I was I was talking to her this summer and she was she was doing real bad. Like I, I'm not really exaggerating. She 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 does get really sick and then she comes back and it is the damnest thing you ever see. I mean she comes back like John Travolta comes back. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's like it, it's like there, there will there will be yet another Tarantino movie and she will break. She will be dancing. And, 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 but it is for her. Or skating. But um, another story. But uh, but. Uh, so, so, but I was talking, she was doing particularly bad this, towards the end of the summer, and I was talking to her on the phone, and, uh, and, and we had a really nice talk, and it doesn't always go that way. It was a real nice talk, and I hung up, and, uh, and I was kind of sad, you know, and I, and I wrote this song, and it, I mean, it happened so fast, I didn't even know what I was, and it's like, oh, I said, I think I have a new song. And, uh, and so I, I, I played it for my sister, and she's like, wow, that's really sweet. It's like, that's a really nice song. Mother's going to hate it. <laughs> 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 she, she will. <laughs> but, um, you know, one, one, of, one of her de defining things in her life is um, she's never gotten along with her brother. And, uh, and uh, he, he was, uh, uh, he's been very successful in, every aspect of his life, and he was a, a, a fighter pilot, and he got the distinguished flying cross, and he, you know, he was, became a successful banker and shit, and he's, he's, he's done, done really well in life, and, and he and my mom hated each other as kids, and then growing up just didn't help a bit. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so, uh, at any rate, the song's called Scott's Sister, and... Uh, <laughs> If you do happen to run into my mom, tell her that's talking nice about her. <laughs> Mama came out. There's a feeling in my heart. 
kids really love you, even though they barely know you. I'm trying to come to terms with the dead side. I wish that I could take away the pain you're in, and I hope I get to see Scott's sister again. I hope I get to see Scott's sister again. Stretch my arms across the USA. I still couldn't reach where you are today. I know that there have been times when I wanted it that way. But time has a way of leveling things. Time has a way of leveling. Sometimes right about I opened up my veins And my mama came out There's a buzzing in my brain Like a bad transistor There's a bee in your bonnet Over being Scott's
distant promise till the truth came down upon us, descending all our hopes into despair. We took our leave and headed north. The tank had twenty dollars worth. The highway called our names like sirens call. Twenty-five and on the run, William Eggleston. Parking lots of me on
now standing in the shadows of her nose when she mentions you something more. Being shot in the classroom in Oregon. It's a morning night, so many others ready for some birthdays. The sun burned the fog away, the breeze blew the mist away. My friend Jack was having a baby.
story, turn the love the smile, try to glass so brighter futures, let it drag us both behind. Glass so brighter futures, let it drag us both behind.
loves no more. Need me try to be political? You connect to the comments. What's the point of those places when the president's in line? And that guy who killed that kid in the forest standing ground, three feet up on his girlfriend, wave a brand new gun around. My son kid is dead and buried and laid in the ground with a pocket full of skin.
so miserable and so unhappy that she locked herself in her bedroom and she didn't come out for six years. <laughs> My mom's bedroom had three TV sets like Elvis. VCR on top of each one. Recording all the shows she wasn't watching. For six long years she stayed locked in her room, drinking vodka and milk. Reading the mass in the choir of the sun and the star, flipping them channels. And then my sister graduated from school and the child support ran out and my mom was forced to go out and get a job. And I know I don't have to tell you it's a mean goddamn cruel world out there for a 50-year-old woman. Without no college education, no prior work experience. She had to work one shit job after another just to pay the rent. Until finally fate or something led her to a place called R&D Trucking in Florence, Alabama. And they hired my mom as what they call a truck wall guarder. She came in every Monday morning and audited all them truck drivers' logs and make sure they hadn't been driving too many miles without sleep or something. And if they had, her job was to catch it before the DOT did to keep R&D trucking from paying a big fine. And there was this one truck driver. His name was Chester. Chester was the biggest one in his head on the Chester was about 350 pounds of pure muscle and gut. And Chester had the word Kim tattooed right there on his forearm. And every week she'd have to call him into her office and bitch at him. And then finally one day she just totally lost it. She's standing up on top of her desk so she can have a height advantage on her. I'm supposed to be a music kid. And she's yelling at the top of her lungs and she's saying, she's saying, she's saying, Chester! God damn it, Chester. Every week you fuck up your logs, but you know I'm going to catch you. I'm going to call you in here and bitch at you. What gives? And Chester, he just looked her on the right square in the eye. And he said, Jan, it's because I'm in love with you. And if the only way I'd ever get to talk to you was to screw up in logs. This happened so sweet. And six months later to the day, my mom and Chester, they ran off to a tattoo studio. And he had Kim changed to Jan. And then they eloped to a place called Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. They got married in Dollywood. It was 1994 and I just moved to Athens, Georgia and I didn't have any money. So I wrote my mama this song, but she evidently couldn't remember. <laughs> it's called 18 Wheels of Love. Mowering off with a trucker. 
Florence, Alabama. Uh, shows are here, Muscle Shoals are here, uh, North Alabama. And um, it was, uh, uh, I mean, it's actually gotten kind of cool now there. But when I was growing up, it was kind of this hellish place. And uh, there was a dry county, and uh, there was, um, you had to go to the state line up in the, the Tennessee state line, which is like 11 miles of windy, dangerous two-lane road infested with drunks and cops in order to in order to buy a beer. And uh, if you wanted liquor, you had to drive about 45 minutes further uh, to a town called Savannah, Tennessee, to buy liquor, or a place called Minor Hill, Tennessee. It's about ten for ten, about an hour each way for each one of those to buy liquor. Or go to the bootlegger, right down the street. Go to the street and I loved it as a teenager because when I was underage and I couldn't buy liquor, bootleggers don't give a shit out of I would just go to Jackie Bass and have a drive-in window like a bank teller would have. And then the window would come out and you put your $20, up, $20 in and you'd get like a bottle of really cheap whiskey. And I would drink it. <laughs> teenage drunk. Yeah. So thank you to all the churches that kept my heart in the And in the year I got to be legal age, they voted me for you. So uh, that's a true story. If you want to know, I will tell a story. If, if I'm into something. I'm, I'm, I'm building up to something. I'm getting on to that. So if, if, you, if you wanted to go to a concert, we, we got about one, about one a year at Flowers Hall, which is about 3,000, 3,500 people. And, uh, and we got some surprisingly good shows. We got a lot of bands before they became famous would play there. And, um, and, and it was kind of unbelievable looking back on it, all the people that came. But, but at the time, I really just thought it sucked because no, I thought nobody ever came. You know, a year is a long time when you're young and a teenager, whereas right now a year is like... And so, uh, and so, if you wanted to go to a concert, you had to hitch a ride to Birmingham or Huntsville or Nashville or somewhere, and uh, two to three hours, four hours away, you get to go to a concert. And if you wanted to see someone like Zeppelin or Rolling Stones, you had to go all the way to Atlanta, and I was shit of luck, so I never got to see any of those bands. But I saw Kansas probably twelve times. <laughs> Every tour, like for a decade, they opened every tour of the Long Gone Civic Center. Uh, and yes, our closest arena was named after a Nazi. And, uh, so, um, so the Long Gone Civic Center had Kansas with Eddie Money, we had Kansas with Survivor, we had Kansas with, uh, remember Albert Nova? <laughs> we had Kansas with. Uh, over and over and over. I saw Kansas a whole lot. Uh, I hated Kansas. But I never missed it because it was five, six bucks. It was a concert, you know. You'd sneak a bottle in and see the people. And it was a, it was a rock show. And, uh, so I saw a lot of those little bands growing up and loved every second of it. And, uh, and uh, it wasn't until I got older that I had the luxury of being like too cool to, 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 to think I was too cool for some of those bands. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that part of it. But, uh, but I did see one really amazing show at a kind of crazy young age. I was staying with my grandfather and, uh, up in Charleston, West Virginia. And, uh, he was a pipe fitter, and so he went wherever the work was. And for a couple of years, the work for him was in Charleston. And my grandmother stayed at home to help raise me, because my parents were teenagers when I was born, and so it was better that way. And, uh, and my grandmother and I road tripped up in the uh, Thanksgiving weekend, 1977. We went road trip to to visit my granddaddy in Charleston, and there was a rock show in town. I didn't really know anything about ACDC at the time. But it was $3 to see ACDC with UFO and a band called The Motors. 
for three bucks, and I talked, my grandmother was so amazing, I talked her into driving me to the concert, and then she sat in the car and read a book with a flashlight, and I my brains
Yeah.